Let's take an example. We all learn from examples. You're cruising, all is well, and then suddenly, boom, you get two engine failures at the same time. Dear guests, welcome back to the channel. Today, let us talk about not one, but two engine failures. Now, there are a variety of reasons why an engine will fail. It could be a bird strike, entering into volcanic ashes, engine oil leak, or simply because the engines are having a bad day. When you notice any engine abnormal response, you should analyze the malfunction and if possible, keep the engine running. Why? Because even at idle, the engine powers the hydraulic, electric and bleed systems. If the pilot is not sure what the malfunction is, he or she should still keep the engines running because if it is really damaged, the engines will eventually fail. Let's take an example. We all learn from examples. You're cruising, all is well and then suddenly, boom, you get two engine failures at the same time. First off, how do you identify an engine failure? You will get an ECAM alert and notice a loss of trust. No, not trust issues with your partner, engine trust. Sometimes the flight warning computer does not detect an all engine failure condition if the residual N2 remains slightly above the engine failure alert threshold. You will realize that your aircraft will go into electrical emergency configuration as AC bus bus are lost. So the ram air turbine extend to supply the essential items which is the AC essential and DC essential buses. This emergency generator can supply electrical power that is necessary for the rest of the flight. Even better, if it is below flight level 250, then you can start the APU which can recover cabin pressurization, other electrical power and also bleed air to start the engines. Just take note that each APU start will reduce flight time on batteries by 3.5 minutes. Question, what is the total flight time on batteries? Well, do comment below if you know the answer. Once the rat is out, not this rat, it powers the blue hydraulic system, the ram air turbine. Avoid large and rapid rudder movements. Yes, the right aileron is lost and you can still balance the roll. Pilots may use the rudder trim to generate side slip to compensate for the aileron. Rudder trim, not rudder. So, when both engines fail, the autopilot, flight directors, and auto trust becomes lost. Aircraft operates in alternate law. The FO side of the PFD and MD are lost. The left hand seat pilot will then become the pilot flying because only PFD 1 is available. Pilot flying must then take control and ensure a safe flight path. The pilot monitoring then performs the ECAM actions. The EWD remains available, so if you want to see system pages, then press the system page and hold. Performing ECAM actions. Once ECAM actions is done, proceed with the all engines fail QRH procedure. Some aircraft optimum relight speed is 300 knots and mark decimal 77. For newer aircraft, it is 270 knots or mark decimal 77. There are pitch target tables for the optimum relight speed in case you have unreliable speed. Do watch my videos on A320 Volcanic Ash for more information. If below flight level 250, start the APU. Trust levers set to idle to avoid a power surge when the engine relights. You are in alternate law, so your overspeed protection is lost and mark upper limits is reduced. FEC one off then on to get back your speed displays on the PFD and also recover your rudder trim. Gliding distance is 2 nautical mile per 1000 feet and initiate the diversion. If an engine relight can be done, engine mode selector set to ignition. Get the windmill relight speed, then both engine masters off for 30 seconds and then on. Repeat this process until successful. If engine lights up, good for you. Approaching flight level 250, start the APU. At flight level 200, switch on the APU bleed. Now since we have APU bleed, we can start the engines using it and at green dot speed. If your speed indication is unreliable, then refer to the QRH for operating speeds. Rough way to calculate green dot speed is to take your gross weight multiplied by 2 and then plus 85. Switch off wing anti-ice, APU bleed on and then start the engine one at a time with 30 seconds interval. If relight cannot be attempted, perhaps because of damage or lack of fuel, then we might have to perform a forced landing or ditching procedure. For forced landing, your descent slope is 1.6 nautical miles per 1000 feet which is 600 feet per nautical mile. This is with config 2 and gear down. Maintain above 140 knots for your ram air turbine to function. GPWS system off, 
GPWS terrain to off. This is to avoid nuisance warnings. Configure the aircraft for landing at least above 3000 feet AGL. Use config 2 only the slats will extend and it will extend very slowly. Get your V approach speed from the table. For example, at 60 tons, your V approach speed is 163 knots. Pretty high. Extend the landing gear only when the aircraft is in config 2 and V approach. You will extend the gear using gravity gear extension procedure and aircraft will revert to direct law. Do check out my videos on A320 Airbus laws. Man pitch trim is not available so disregard the message on the PFD. When gears is down lock, landing gear lever down and adjust the approach speed. Arm the spoilers. At 2000 feet AGL, tell the cabin crew that you are going to land. At 500 feet AGL, tell everyone to brace for impact. At touchdown, all engine masters off. APU master switch off. Brakes on the accumulators only limited to 1000 PSI. When the aircraft has stopped, set the parking brake to on. Notify ATC. Push all the push buttons and discharge all agents. Do note that engine agent 2 is not available. If evacuation is required, initiate it over the PA or press the evac command. Evacuation is not required, then notify everyone. Minimum red speed is 140 knots. Turning the GPWS and terrain to off will prevent distracting warnings occurring as you are ditching. And at an appropriate altitude, possibly above 3000 feet AGL, configure the aircraft for ditching. Use flaps too and keep the landing gear up. Determine the V approach speed. For 60 tons, it is 163 knots. Notify cabin as required by your company SEPs. Ditching push button to on closes all valves below the aircraft waterline, such as ram air inlet, avionics ventilation inlet and extractor, pack and cargo isolation. At 500 feet, announce. This is the captain. Brace for impact. Flat for a target pitch of 11 degrees and the slowest possible approach speed. The minimum control speed is approximately 150 knots. Once the aircraft has impacted the water, allow it to decelerate before performing these actions and these actions are only important if the engines or the APU are running. At touchdown, all engine masters off and the APU master switch will be set to off and after ditching, these actions are to secure the aircraft for an evacuation. Remember, only VH of 1 is available as the aircraft is on battery power. A reminder will be to review my video on electrical emergency configuration. Push all fire push buttons, discharge all agents and the second agent in each engine requires AC power. Therefore, pushing the discharge button in this specific case does not achieve anything but it is not detrimental. Initiate the evacuation, check that the ELT is emitting, if not switch on the transmitter and the rest of the actions will be done in accordance to your company safety emergency procedure manual.